Hi, and welcome to Family Paws webinar webcasts. My name is Jennifer Shryak. I'm a certified dog behavior consultant and mother of four, and also the founder and director of Family Paws Parent Education. I want to welcome you today to find out some more information on some of the frequently asked questions that we receive. Today, the topic we're going to cover is Jen, my dog is growling at my 10 month old baby. What do I do? You know, I get this question very often. And if you're going through this, you're not alone. Dogs and babies often do have a hard time adjusting to one another, and there's some really good reasons why. So let's talk about some of the reasons and some of the challenges you might actually be experiencing as well. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is, you know, when we are expecting a baby we know what's happening we research we look into things we find out about the different developmental parts of pregnancy what's happening with the fetus with the baby we learn about child development we read all sorts of books last I checked dogs aren't really good at using an encyclopedia or wiki or any of that stuff so they're really kind of kept in the dark about this whole change that's going on with us even though they might sense some things and some things are different some dogs are going to handle that differently than others. So what I want to talk to you today is about what makes things work or not work when it comes to toddlers in the home with dogs. So as I said, we go from expecting a baby and looking very pregnant to all of a sudden now the baby's in our arms and everything and then running before we know it. That can be a lot for dogs to take. It's a lot for us to take as adults and people. So one of the key components that I find in that's consistent in the calls that I get is a lack of supervision and how people perceive supervision. So I broke it down into five parts hoping that it might help people to better understand what we mean when we constantly are saying supervise, supervise, supervise. Um, the first type of supervision that I think is most dangerous is absent. Absent supervision means that there is no supervision, it's just that. It's absent. So for example, you need to run to the bathroom, you leave your toddler in the room and your dog's playing around too, or your dog's resting and your toddler crawls up to your dog and all of a sudden you hear something and you go, oh, I don't know what happened, I didn't see it. That would be absent supervision. Absent supervision makes it very hard for someone like myself to help you because you missed and didn't see what was going on. So that is very, very, very dangerous. Um, passive supervision is something like, I can give the example, my own example, um, I remember asking my husband to watch Kelsey. I walk into the living room and he's on his laptop and the dogs are, you know, milling around and I see Kelsey running around and I say, honey, are you really watching? This is a great example of passive supervision. It's distracted. An adult is distracted. There are many ways to be distracted. We are distracted all the time. I've got my Blackberry. I've got my Angry Birds, my Words with Friends. I mean, face it. A toddler doesn't always occupy our mind and we need things to do. So we are constantly doing things and often multitasking, which can lead to distracted supervision. So we're going to talk about solutions for that. Then there's reactive supervision. That's the uh-oh, now what kind of thing. So for example, you're sitting there and you're reading or you're looking at something and you see your toddler go up to your dog and your dog's looking not so happy and you rush over to get your toddler and you go, no, 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 and you pull them away. You've reacted. And what concerns me about reactive supervision is now you've set kind of a stage and pattern that your dog now says, hmm, whenever baby comes close to me, mom kind of freaks out a little bit and gets stressed. So inadvertently, to preventing something from happening, you could be creating more stress there. So I, I worry a little bit about that as well. What I like to see is proactive supervision. So for example, going back to the situation with my husband who's sitting on his laptop and doing something, which I've been guilty of myself. We all do these things, you know, whether it be cleaning the house, doing our makeup, answering emails, playing Angry Birds, whatever it is you may want to do. Um, proactive supervision is what we're looking for. That's when we say, all right, you know what? I'm going to be looking at my Kindle and I really, you know, Kelsey's going to be playing and she's fine because the room's child proofed and I'm just going to put the dogs in another room so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to stress about it. I'm going to give them a nice frozen Kong. I'm going to give them something to do and I'm just going to do what I need to do for my for me. That's proactive supervision. Thinking ahead, planning ahead. That's excellent. Using crates, gates, and all sorts of other options for separation is really, really key there. 
Then there's what we call active supervision. That's two adult awake eyes watching dog and baby if they're in the room together, using their body to get in between them should there become a stressful point. So those are the five different types of supervision. And we cover this in a lot of detail in our Dog and Baby Connection program and webinar. But this is typical, right? Multitasking mayhem. I feel like this is, you know, what we're all doing and juggling. And that makes it hard for us, but our dogs too. So what I encourage, and this is where I see a lot of people also have some encounters, is their expectations is that their dog should tolerate and put up with any kind of touch. And I fully disagree. Our dogs really have their own comfort level, and it's up to us to be respectful of our dog's comfort level. It's up to us to guide our children. I personally don't really like babies interacting and touching and petting and handling dogs and stuff freely unless there's an adult with their hand on top of the baby's hand and guiding it. That can actually build a comfort between the dog and the baby just because there, it is bridged with the adult who's familiar to the dog. I don't want kids freely touching. So in the top left photo, you can see that at any moment that child could stick their finger in the dog's ear or eye. They should not be freely petting and interacting, exploring the dog. Always with a parent hand over their hand to help guide the hand and make sure that it is gentle, guided touch. This is a much safer situation for both. The other thing is that a lot of times, as you can see in the top left photo, when children, toddlers approach a dog, it can lead to a dog feeling uncomfortable. So if there's example ap absent or passive supervision, an adult may miss the signals like the dog in the top left is showing. He's licking his lips, indicating that he is not comfortable, he's stressed, and he would like some distance, please. In those moments when a dog is licking their lips, turning away, or offering signals, um, those are times that they're saying, can someone help me? I'm not comfortable, I need help. I consider those signals that are help signals. They're looking for help, they're looking for intervention. If an adult is not paying attention, they're not gonna see it. Dogs will offer those signals time and time and time again until over time they realize they don't work anymore and then they might growl. So often when someone calls and says that now the dog's growling, I, I think that the dog probably has been offering some signals that have been missed and you know honestly most of those signals are things that you wouldn't necessarily know unless you were really paying attention or someone has educated you on them such as licking lips turning away scratching sniffing yawning all these things so I encourage you to visit doggonsafe.com to learn about those signals especially if you're caretaking for a toddler and a dog in a home the bottom left is also a picture where um, it's guided touch go, gone wrong. It's someone holding a baby and leaning over the dog. We don't want that. Many kids go to pet a dog on the top of the head. When you pet them like this, it kind of blocks their view, right? So you can't see when, you know, if I do this, I'm blocking. You know, you can't see my eyes. So I really want you to think about that. Always want to set it up so dog's comfortable and the baby's comfortable so that you're building a relationship, not making the dog um, anticipate more stress. On the top right, you can see the dog is easing in. The dog was invited over. It's getting his head rubbed, and it is adult guided. Same with the bottom right photo. Dogs should always have the option to opt out, to not engage. That is the best option. And I like to watch what dogs do. If they did engage with the child and then choose to leave, I always say good choice, you know, reinforce them for that. So that's just a little bit. The common things that I see that often lead to those phone calls that I get about all of a sudden our dog is, is not comfortable with our 10-month-old, our 11-month-old is one, toddlers with their change in predictable behavior because they're moving differently. It's hard for adults to take. There's a lot more stress in the house. There's a lot more stress for the dog and for the parents. Um, and so that can lead to uncomfortable feelings and without proper active or proactive supervision an adult most likely is going to miss any potential signals a dog might offer indicating that they're stressed i encourage you to visit familypause.com to seek the help of uh, one of our presenters or check out our webinars if you're experiencing any of these concerns or if you just want to learn more we welcome you to our website familypause.com send us your questions and we also want to recommend doggonsafe.com until next time I really hope that you and your dog and your child are having a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again